All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next thing, our <coughs> this is the agenda. Uh, put uh, summer intern, Dean Zaccardi, and... Is that the same thing? He's the intern? He is the intern. And regional trail map. Regional what? Trail map. Second? Second. Second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, communications? Are there any communications? So, based on when I received the agenda at 10 o'clock today, which was the wrong agenda, and a different one went to you, and none of it went to the rest of the people on the list, can I confirm that this is a legal meeting tonight? was posted properly and correctly with Vera with the right amount of time. Yeah, I believe so. And it is not on the website. It's not that, on that's the, not a legal Do you want me to check and see if Vera we, posted it? We can take a look if it's on the, on the it's wall It's on the board there. then. It's, right. right. And she has a date and time she received it. Sure, we can do that if that's an issue. May as well, so I'm sitting here doing a lot of business for nothing. <laughs> Are there any other communications? Uh, do you have an update on the West Cornwall pedestrian signs? Uh, I talked to, I called up DOT and the guy was on vacation, but apparently they're looking into it. So we'll try to get that going a couple of items and talk to them about. Do you have an update on the railroad spraying for uh, the Brian Oler bill that the governor was supposed to sign? There were some issues with spraying this week. We got letters from folks on that. Oh, we didn't talk about that last time? We did just say that right. the bill passed the legislator. It was waiting for the governor to sign. But then in the meantime, the railroad company came through with their spraying, and we got a couple letters yeah. about that. Yes, so and I, I, I talked to Brian that. about that, and he talked to the concerned citizens about that. Uh, we could, yeah. We did get calls about the railroad spraying. Should we add that on to the agenda? Yeah, we can add, add that to the third item. Sure. So, really. Is it Tom Clark sitting right over there? Oh, yeah. It's good. Okay, good. Good. Okay, so. So, she did that on Monday. Um, under communication, we talked about some outstanding issues with DOT, and uh, we also added railroad spring to the agenda. And then the other thing is, uh, we had talked about putting out a call for a food truck in West Cornwall. So there's some association or group of people that do that. Did, did that happen? Did we get any response? I did. I did uh, encourage the hot dog. Then you go down there, so that's. And right. Did the call there. for the food truck people go out from the economic did, development committee? I think I did talk to Janet about that. So. There, is sure. a, there is a, the hot dog guys in West Cornwall. Right, right. right. We were going to put the call out to the food truck. Was it an so, association or a club or something? They were in Arlington like two weeks ago. Yeah. So I, I'll talk to Janet again see if that's happening. Okay, so we've added railroad spring to the agenda. Uh, public comments, any public comments? Only as it relates to agendas and minutes and votes in that agendas, even though you say that, uh, Gordon, that the website is not legal, once a, a vehicle has become customary, you should check that with uh, Tom Hennick because he spoke about customary postings, so perhaps the website is considered a customary site now. 
and <clears throat> uh, the minutes need to be posted within seven days of the meeting, whether or not they've been approved, and they're assumed to be draft until they're approved at, at the next meeting. And uh, if any votes were taken during any meeting, uh, it needs to be known where the results of those votes can be acquired and that needs to be available within 48 hours of the meeting. Okay, any other public comments? Any comment from you on my comments? Um, I just think public comments are one way, generally. And I've, I have talked to Tom Hennick constantly about the issue, and I will talk to him again when I have a chance, but his last reading was it's not an official website. So I'll see if he's changed his thoughts on that. And I think Joyce does a very good job with the minutes. She happened to be out last night on the ambulance call at 3 o'clock in the morning. So I would cut her some slack on, on the peculiarities of the internet. I didn't even mention Joyce. I'm not it's saying not, you did. Not about Joyce. And, and the minutes are not in the vault uh, within seven days. The minutes for the selectmen's meetings, at least, are held back until they're approved at the next meeting or subsequent meetings. Mm -hmm. So they, they just need to be on file within seven days. They do, and the votes have to be in within 48 hours. Even if the whole minutes aren't in there, at least the votes need to be in there. And that's you know, what's legally required. It doesn't specify where the votes need to be just that they need to be somewhere, the municipality needs to identify. Okay, any other public comments? Uh, first on the agenda is new fire truck has arrived and just down the road. The uh, department is working with the uh, sales representative to uh, train on it. Those are the flashing lights we see. Those are the flashing lights you see in the distance. It's a new fire truck. <laughs> 3,000 gallons of water on wheels. Um, looks to be very uh, good condition and ready to go. So they will be training for the next month on the new truck with the help of the company. Uh, asphalt bids, any other questions on the new fire truck? Uh, asphalt bids, uh, we did receive those came in this morning? This morning we had three bids on asphalt bids. Uh, and the three bidders were a and J uh, Paving, Metcalf Paving, and Waters Construction. A&J um, bid was uh, $83 a ton. Uh, Metcalf's bid was $86.50 a ton. Waters Construction was 87.20 a ton. Uh, Jim's reviewed these and it's his and my recommendation that we go with a &J paving. Did we use them before? Yeah, we used them last year, if not the year before that. Um, yes, and Jim was impressed last year that they were right on the specifications. We've never gotten any from bids from Waters before, have we? Yeah, we actually we've used Waters and Metcalf in other years. I mean, but years, quite a, quite a long a time. Yeah, eight, yeah. ten years ago. Maybe? We're probably repaving their paving. I mean, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah, but they, all three companies do good work, and it's nice to have a. I just don't remember Waters bidding. Right. Eight, eight or ten years. Yeah. So. Metcalf, I think, bids most years. So I make a motion to accept the. Paving quote from A and J. I'll second that. How many tons are we putting down? Uh, Thirteen hundred. So the difference of three dollars a ton is about four thousand dollars. Where do you anticipate using the asphalt? What or when? Where? Uh, there's a section on Great Hollow and also one 
on Clark Road and a little bit on Great Hill Road. Would this be an opportune time to fix people's aprons that are falling apart? Uh, generally, that's the that is the responsibility of the homeowner, not the town. The apron is. Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When people put a new driveway, they have to pay for it, and that's homeowner responsibility. We don't go around town doing aprons as much as I'd like to do it because my my needs to be replaced. Well, they, you know, a wheelbarrow too, left over. Uh, they generally come in pretty quick, so um, right. I'm sure all those companies would give you a quote on on stuff. Thanks. You're welcome. What did, what was um, what do we had? <clears throat> how much we had we had anticipated to spend uh, when doing this? Approximately this amount. These, these amounts are about um, what we've used in the past. We're around so, $100,000. Yeah. So for maybe even a little bit less than other years. So we have $300,000 approximately in the accounts and this will allow for more surfacing and resurfacing. There are other areas like Jim already has lined up probably to do next year. For paving. For paving. So this work will be done probably August by mid-September. Okay, so any other questions on the motion to accept the AMGP? All in favor? Aye. Aye. So I did talk to the engineer, Mr. Hesketh, about getting preliminary plans from the, uh, of the Coral Bridge Crosswalk, he hoped to get them by today, he did not, so we will have them for the next meeting. Uh, so, that's that on crosswalks. Um, Board of Assessment Appeals vacancy. Um, town clerk noted that Karen Barty Maloney registered to vote in another town, and when anyone who's an elected official ceases to be an elector, that becomes vacant. So I told her that that's the rules of the office. So just as elections are coming up, people should know that there will be a vacancy in that position. There is a, a vacancy at the current time. I did talk to Roger Kane, who's the chair of the uh, Assessment Appeals Board. He said that the Workload will be light <coughs> between now and November, so there's no need to fill the vacancy before the next election. Uh, tax abatement application. Joyce worked on that. It was Here's the paperwork. A few missing things. In there. there were a few missing things. Joyce did the um, Joyce looked at the the income listed and divided it. Came up with a different number than the applicant. So if you um, divide the income by the to get the average income and the tax liability is less than the income is less than 10% of the tax liability. So that would seem to make this application not valid. Now there's a question as I, I also looked at this. This is a general procedural question that we need to think about. If you look at the application, it says people's total income from any source. Now. If you, if we use the standard adjusted income level that um, often Social Security as a income is taken out of that. So that is not included. Whereas in this it says all, all income. So the question is do you include Social Security in that or not. 
and even taking the Social Security out of it, this applicant would appear to have more income than 10% of your tax bill when you meet the guideline. Slightly. <clears throat> Is she old enough to receive Social Security? I think so, yeah. We can't hear you. I'm sorry, you're talking just to each other. I asked whether she was old enough to receive Social Security. This is Joyce. Yeah. And she got these numbers from these applications, which you can read. And you're saying that this number on here does not include Social Security? Correct. If you look at the individual applications, you can see the same. But our yeah. thing says income from all sources. Well, that would be whatever line that is in your tax form. Right. You know, it's pretty straightforward. You look at any one of the years there. There's, and it's variable for me in the year. excuse me. I didn't hear why you would eliminate Social Security income. In the calculations there, they're based on a line that when people find, when people file some forms, sometimes Social Security is taken out of the total income. It's adjusted net income as opposed to total income. So the board hasn't really addressed it. We haven't had cases that have been close, whether we would count Social Security's income as in some cases it's taken out as a source of income when you whatever line it is I think it's adjusted net income. Well, adjusted oh, gross income. For, what? Line 37 adjusted gross income. But are we talking yeah I mean that becomes the question and how, whatever however we define the, um, uh, the ordinance. The, the ordinance. Is. Thank you. Right. The ordinance. Whether it's the uh, total income, adjusted gross income, uh, taxable income, a lot of different lines that can be stated as your income. Correct. Um, any total income from any sources of the owners and any persons for whom such dwelling is the primary place of residence on average for the three preceding calendar years. Eddie, would you read so we can hear, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the total income from any sources of the owners and any persons for whom such dwelling is the primary place of residence on average for the three preceding calendar years. Your registered voter? I believe so. Doesn't say you have to be. Right. But, but if you follow the worksheet, this is 10%. Right. This is tax and this is her tax liability. Right. Right. So she has a qualify. So right. again, we need and some then, clarification. Right. Well, so even, even before. Before even taking out the Social Security, there's too much, apparently too much average income over a period of time. But I, I also think the reason why we're spending time on this is going forward. I think before we get any more applications, we should have a sense whether it's what do what does the board do about Social Security income? And any I, income, total income from any sources from the owner and any person who lives there. Right, so uh, if I'm in agreement with you, but I, just, I don't think we, there, had, we hadn't clarified I mean, that unless point. Unless we want to officially change it, but it looks like this is written based on the statute, so you'd have to change the statute if you didn't want to. I think any is any. 
What do you think, Barbara? You're the accountant. <laughs> You're the accountant at the table. You have to read the statute. You have to check the statute and go from right. there. This is a the application shows. form yeah. as opposed to what the actual Pursuant statute. Pursuant to the statute, though. Okay, so maybe we'll check the statute, and at this point, we can tell it doesn't seem like it qualifies, and we'll check the statute just to make a motion to deny it pending the statute or something like that. But going forward, we are, would include Social Security income as a source of income. One, yes. Yeah. What is, this is in there for... Okay. Yeah, just to figure that. Yeah, now the Wi-Fi is down. I'm going to check on that, too. The Wi-Fi? Yeah, not. Will we get in a signal? I'll tell you after. Okay, because <laughs> it's Cornwall. <laughs> no. Somebody sneezed. <laughs> no. Okay, so I'll make a motion to deny the application pending review of the state statute. Second. And that we count, going forward, count Social Security for other payments as income. Great. Any more discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So right on cue, in walks Dean Zaccardi, <laughs> summer intern, Cornwall resident, and I'm lucky that uh, Dean has volunteered to intern it in uh, the office for the summer. Uh, he is a, a resident of Cornwall, attends the schools here, and is interested in government. Uh, and I've brought him up to date on some of the issues that we are working with. He'll be attending meetings with me. He was there when we opened up the bids this morning. Um, and he will be doing some research on some of the issues in front of the town. And one of the ones I asked him if he would do and he agreed to was to um, do a report to uh, me and the selectmen on a youth perspective for the future of the town. I think it's often um, in my mind that the very important issue facing the town is um, young people, uh, lack of young people, aging population, and I think it's important also uh, that we hear from a young perspective uh, what they think about growing up here, what opportunities are here, what things the town could do better as far as attracting young families. So it's not just um, high school kids, but interview young people who moved here, what attracts people here, people that would like to live here, what are some of the obstacles to living here, and do it from a young person's perspective. So that will be one of his projects for the summer and we'll be hearing back from him and he'll be publicizing his work um, in the Chronicle and on the websites and things. So if you know young people have things to say, Dean will get that information to us. Um, I think it'll be interesting what he comes up with. So Dean, did you have anything to say? I, I'm, I'm excited for this, and basically, of course, in most of but yeah, I'll be sort of collecting data and give a report on you know, being formal, anyone from, you know, younger than my age up to, you know, um, uh, you know, my siblings, and you know, young adults, basically, early couples and stuff like that, so. And you are a high school intern or college intern? I'm in high school. I will be a rising junior. Volunteer. Um, Volunteer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we've already taken a hike on the Flat Rocks Fire yes. with a local forester to get a report on the regeneration of the forest as well as invasive species. Very interesting what we found up there as far as what was regrowing and uh, what was not regrowing. 
So mm-hmm. health of the hemlock forest. Health of the so it's going to be a report on that. You're saying uh, just we can put that. Yeah, there will be. Stay uh, well, actually, our our um, our leader um, is going to write an article about it. The condition of the forest after the year after the fire. Or Who's the leader? Eight, uh, Peter Tedici, who is a, a part-time resident, who is a um, has good knowledge of force, so he will be writing up a piece about that. Okay. So local interest, so we're trying to reach out and tackle some issues there. Uh, Another, I would think the state would be be taking some look at it over time. Well, I think, you know, one of the large, one of the larger tracts of burned areas. Right. And one thing that came up in the process of our hike is the decline of, of some forest species, especially ash, and there, the hemlocks are were under stress anyway before the fire. And not to steal the thunder, but his, he'd be really surprised if the hemlocks in that burn area have survived. Uh, they may not die this year, but it will stress them out. And normally it takes two or three years for the stress of, of such an event to uh, to show itself. But uh, especially with the woolly adelgid and the insect that's pushing uh, in this kill, the hemlocks in other parts of the state uh, because it's colder here, we haven't seen as much of it, but it is, it is already in Cornwall. So, um, you know, as the town ship has large stands of hemlock, that obviously also becomes a fire issue, even much greater than lightning. So there's a bunch of ongoing issues to talk about. The one thing that's not happening right now in this area is the gypsy moth. Right. Which is devastating. The- it's Eastern brutal, state. all the way up the Connecticut Valley to mm-hmm. Vermont and New Hampshire, and especially for a second year. Right. Some of some areas in the year seen again that's going to affect the the life of the forest. And that's so, that's hundred tens of thousands of acres. Right. Of, of yeah. Trees being defoliated. Yeah, all the way up into northern New Hampshire, we saw some. Yeah. So that's that's Dean. Welcome, Dean. Glad to have you here. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, the other addition to our agenda uh, was the regional trail uh, map. Uh, this is an uh, initiative through the uh, Council of Governments. <coughs> They're looking at the regional trail network. Uh, we did get a letter from Jared uh, Haynes, who's um, President of Dark Country Forest, asking for more time. Uh, and HVA is doing some mapping for the, uh, the COG, just looking very broad terms as far as what trails are there, where there may be uh, new trails, which obviously would be a big undertaking to connect some of the existing trails. And I did talk to um, Rick Lynn today and I did agree that we needed some more time to do this and I know um, there's some draft reports will be coming out the some of the people who work on this have been sick so they've been delayed in getting some of the drafts out so that will push the whole uh, s- schedule back as far as getting the work but it's obviously a long-term project in a very draft form and there's plenty of time to get input and <clears throat> how big are, out. How big a regional regional trail map are they referring to? Uh, they've got, I mean, there are already trails from the famous Appalachian to the less famous, but also scenic blue blaze trail systems. There's already trails that probably touch most of the towns in the 21 towns in the COG, and they're looking potentially at a few new trails and some connected trails. So you see the map. There's a map. I think he's trying to send this to you as a uh, attachment. I don't know if I saw that. But so they're talking about all the, the trails in all the different towns within the within within Cog yeah. itself. 
that and most both state or federal and maybe local trails then too? Uh, yeah. And some of the trails that the Conservation uh, Trust may have or the mm -hmm. okay. general hiking opportunities. Okay. And I think most, almost, I mean, I think every town has a significant trail in it, at least one or two. Right. Cornwall seems to have a lot, but it's all right. So anyway, we'll be watching that as time goes on. Uh, anything else on that? Those are our petitions. That railroad spring. Oh, railroad yeah. spring. Yes, we did receive. I did receive a call from a resident on River Road who not walking and saw the railroad was spraying the tracks uh, a day or two before the law that was passed. The legislature had was supposed to go into effect. Uh, so he and I both got on the phone to Representative Oler, who uh, responded quickly. Uh, that, and I'm not sure, you know, to be fair, I don't think the governor signed the bill and it was supposed to go into effect, you know, July 1st. It was on his ready pile of things to sign, but I haven't heard from Brian since the 4th or whenever this happened. Before the 4th, the, the, the governor's actually signed it, but it sounds like it passed all his vetting uh, people and was ready for his signature. So, uh, but in the future, we should be notified of when it's going to be, so how the much they're going to do, and have some So, in the future, the future, I'm pending, sure uh, yeah. pending the government, well, two things, pending, assuming the governor signs the, the bill as, as passed by the legislature gives the town uh, the authority to review the railroad's plans. The railroad has to submit their plans in February for the coming season. So that also gives us, we can't, um, you know, and I haven't memorized the law, but according to Brian, the, um, the gist of the law is that if the town has a problem with the plan, the proposal, then we can take our objections to DOT and to DEP, and then they will make the final decision on what happens. But, um, and without prejudging the plan, it has been pointed out that this particular round of spraying was perhaps unnecessary, is that it was done unlike the uh, the large scale spraying that was done a year ago or more, this was done by a truck on the tracks. So they didn't have the big boom spraying out wide swaths off the tra uh, trail bed, the track bed. Um, and it was videotaped and set on the bright. So, but the air they were spraying there's hardly anything growing because it's so dead due to the spraying. So the question in my mind that we will have a chance to think about is what if the spraying, what spraying is necessary if there's nothing growing? If they've basically established a dead zone, why spray more? Don't know. Second problem with the program, they created a dead zone that some of the trail bed is actually eroding, the vegetation might help preserve and stop erosion right next to the river. So in my mind, it's pretty heavily sprayed already. And another thing to think about vegetation management is what's the management of all the dead trees on the side of the road and on the side of the railroad? Because they're, they are dying quickly. So that's what I look forward to addressing as part of their plan is they, they don't need to go in the town road, they don't need to go in the river. I would like to see their plan address dealing with all these dead trees because it's pretty clear it's right next to the tracks. It's going to not be good for the tracks, road, the river, the, the nearby people. So there's, we'll see how this unfolds, but it will really be 
a new uh, job for this board going forward as well as other municipalities that have impact. So it's good that we have that in place because clearly um, spraying is the preferred option at this point. So any other comments on that? And I commend Brian's efforts and Roberta's before him trying to get something changed. It's one of the few bills that actually passed the legislature. So, okay, any Anything else on spraying? Public comments? Gordon, I was wondering, you mentioned uh, about homeowner responsibility and paving. I wondered if it would be possible uh, with a and Paving getting the contract, if you would be able to uh, talk to them. Uh, I mean, there must be a lot of people in town who have small paving jobs that they'd like to have done. And maybe if you were to talk to them, they might offer something like a day passed when people could sign up and, you know, they could bid on smaller jobs around town since they would be in town to begin with. So residents could get a better buy and it would be, you know, just a service. Um, the town wouldn't make any money on it, but it would be a way that the town might coordinate and leverage giving them the business and then they would provide services back at more reasonable rates because they'd be here in town. Would you be willing to talk to them about possibly negotiating something like that? I could ask them if they would make their, their service available, but I'm sure the reason the town got this incredible deal is they're laying out, they're laying out a thousand tons in two days and mm -hmm. that's done with much bigger equipment that you generally would use you have to prep the places and that kind of stuff, but I'll see if he does driveways and whatever else. But I think a lot of these companies like Metcalf and the other ones also do, do driveways and their prices are based on a pretty much different scenario than laying out hundreds of tons an hour of mm -hmm. asphalt. But it doesn't hurt to try if they if they have a deal. And I'm not even sure they're, and they're, they're such a large contracting firm, I'm not even sure that do driveway. Mm -hmm. I'll ask him and see what he says. Thank you. Okay, any other public comments? Okay, so then our next thing is um, bill payment and we have a delinquent tax discussion which would have to be done in executive session. So I would make a motion that we go into executive session and then pay taxes. Pay pay yes. bills. <laughs> we don't have to pay our taxes. Uh, second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Sure. So why